it scared the hell out of me. I start panicking, panicking. And I get out of the shower and I start like walking around my room and I think, shit, fuck, fuck, fuck. And then I hear my my parents knocking at the door like loud and like, Matt, Matt, yelling at me like, open this door right now, open it now. And I'm freaking out and I see them barge in and like their eyes are way too wide apart, way too wide. Their mouths are just like, again, slamming up and down as they talk and they're like yelling at me for doing all these drugs and it's awful and and then 911 comes and they come with like the stretcher and they get me on the stretcher and I'm sitting there thinking like what is happening what is happening what is happening the following video does not glorify drug use, but instead, it intends to educate people and create awareness leading to harm reduction by discouraging the abuse of drugs, and maybe even harm elimination by discouraging drug use altogether. This video shows some of the effects psychedelic substances can have on the mind while also highlighting what causes those specific effects or outcomes. However, with that being said, these are random people. Please don't make decisions based on what they say without your own due diligence, and also take note that these substances affect everyone differently, especially those with pre-existing mental conditions. After I did LSA, I was way more interested in finding a true psychedelic and the next one i found was mushroom okay so yeah probably 16 late 16 been experimenting with any drug i could get my hands on at that time it's kind of a reckless teenager so mushrooms so i started with like one and a half grams um alone in my room so not recommended I wouldn't even recommend doing psychedelics as a teenager, let alone in your own parents' house, because it's just a bad setting. Uh, but anyways, I, I still had a good time, and it was like clear everything just looked brighter, and I just the music sounded so good. I closed my eyes, and up felt like down. It was just like interesting experience. Um, but nothing too eventful happened. Um, the second time I did it, I did like two grams or two and a half grams and i was sitting actually i did an eighth the second time and i was sitting like in my bathroom and i had the music on and i remember smoking some some weed on it and i was just sitting there and the music was so calm and i saw this like grass grow out of the floor and it was like waving back and forth the room looked really small but again nothing like life-changing nothing too spiritual it just Gave me that false sense of like, oh, I know more, which I later would find out was, you know, actually more ego than less, <laughs> you know. And then I had an experience when I was 16 that like kind of scarred me from psychedelics for a while, which was I've been taking ecstasy a lot from like 15 and a half, to like 16, 16 and a half, um, like stupid amounts, like three, four tabs every weekend turned into like every like three four days which is just never recommend anyone do that because it's just it really fucked me up like i could go into that at a different time but that that was like the thing that fucked me up more than any other drug ever has but before i got into it that bad i did mushrooms so i had five and a half grams with me i had five hits of ecstasy i planned on taking an eighth of mushrooms and two hits of ecstasy with it so I take an eighth and I'm talking to my friend on the phone and after like 10 minutes I didn't make a tea or anything but after 10 minutes I just see my room shrink like it felt like I was in this box that was like three feet tall right and it felt like I was like in this like Alaska because like my the cover on my bed or something so I thought I was in this three foot little box in Alaska almost and I kind of freaked out so I was like I heard ecstasy it just makes everything all good on top of it so I took two hits of ecstasy and then it felt it kind of switched over after like 15 minutes and it felt like I was just rolling on ecstasy. So I was like, this feels great. I really like this. We're gonna take the other two grams of shrooms, right? And I was only like 45, 40 minutes in. It hadn't been that long. I, I take two grams of mushrooms, that's five and a half grams, two hits of ecstasy. And then it starts just getting like overly intense. And uh, I don't know if it's been like an hour and a half-ish, but I take the rest of the ecstasy, I don't know like the exact times I took it all, but it was within like an hour and a half, to two hours I took like all of that. So then the ecstasy hits and then it just feels incredible, right? So I'm sitting there laying on the floor, listening to music. I have this song on shuffle. I think it was ATV by Ecstasy. So I have that song on shuffle. I'm just sitting there on the ground. And I thought that the song had played through one time. I checked the time and it's been two and a half hours, three hours or something. 
So I literally been, I thought, I felt so good in that moment. I thought three hours had gone by in three minutes. Like, no joke, it felt that incredible. It was just like amazing, time just flew by. And then I thought, um, I started to feel like I was coming down just a little bit, barely. And I was like, I want to smoke some weed to make it, you know, more intense. So I turn on the bathroom fan because I was in my parents' house and they're in my room. My sister's room is like right across from mine. Uh, she doesn't know what's going on. My parents don't know what's going on. So I smoke a bowl, but I turn on the shower too. And like, I, I don't know why, but I was like completely naked, like an hour into the trip. I don't know why. <laughs> I was just playing on the bathroom floor without any clothes on. And then I get in the shower, turn on the fan, turn on the shower and smoke a bowl. But the white noise coming from the fan in the shower, like I literally can't have bathroom fans on anymore in the background because it reminds me so much of this that it like just freaks me out. I don't like it. So this trip is the one that kind of traumatized me a little bit. But I heard the fan and everything start to kind of coalesce into like, a, or like I saw it almost. So the white noise kind of turned into this visual in front of me in the shower. And there's these giant wooden doors with vines wrapped all around them. It was the most real thing I've ever seen. And they were like tilted like at a 45 degree angle, just like in front of me. I mean, these things looked massive. And I was in a room that was like, what, eight feet tall. And these these doors felt like they were like 50 feet tall, just towering over me, but still like right in my vision. And I felt an entity talking to me. And it was basically, I thought I was, I kept thinking it was the architect or my architect or something. And I kept hearing it. And I saw these doors closed and I thought I need them to open. Like I need, this is like the doors to the afterlife basically. I need them to open. And then it basically said like, these doors won't open for you. You know, like I'm not worthy to go into this place which is interesting maybe it had something to do with my you know super catholic upbringing i don't know but it just felt like this afterlife that i was not welcome into and i'm not religious anymore really I'm more spiritual than religious but in that case my parents have been making me go to church every week i don't know if that influenced me seeing this these doors the afterlife thinking kind of like it was a heaven thinking that oh, that was god but it scared that hollered me. I start panicking, panicking. And I get out of the shower and I start like walking around my room and I think, shit, fuck, fuck, fuck. And then I hear my my parents knocking at the door like loud, and like, ah, Matt. So I thought they smelled the weed and they were like yelling at me like, open this door right now, open it now. And I'm freaking out. And I see them barge in and they've got these heads that like, it looks like Pac-Man heads almost, like these cartoons, like their eyes are way too wide apart, way too wide. Their mouths are just like, again, slamming up and down as they talk and they're like yelling at me for doing all these drugs and it's awful and I'm panicking and I'm freaking out. And then they call 911 and then 911 comes and they come with like the stretcher. And they get me on the stretcher and I'm sitting there thinking like, what is happening? What is happening? What is happening? I'm freaking out. And I, I can see a doctor come and I see him talking to my parents. The doctor looks more normal. And he's like, you know, you know what? This is like permanent. He's never going to be the same again. Like he's going to be stuck like this forever. And I just start panicking more and more and more and more and more. And I, then I kind of just black out and I wake up and I'm in my bed. I'm just like laying in my bed. My mom walks into the room. She's like, hey, good morning. I was like, wait, what? What the fuck? Like, I literally had been walking around in circles in my room, but as naked for like two hours. And I very much remember all these scenarios playing out. But as I was walking around in circles, there was five like of my own heads also spinning around me, kind of like if someone got hit in the head in a cartoon and the ducks or stars go around their head. There was like five of my heads going around my own head all talking at once. So it was like my ego was split into all these different parts. As I was walking around, still kind of seeing my room, but not understanding I was there. And also experiencing the scenario where I was like getting transported to like a mental institution by my parents who were angry at me. <laughs> so I woke up, I was fucking terrified. I, I told my mom, I was like, I was sick, I can't go to school. Like I felt okay, but I was just like so shook that I just could not. I did not want to leave. I didn't want to do anything but lay in bed. I was terrified. But I was so happy that I was okay. 
And I was like completely fine, you know, like I didn't have any HPPD or nothing. Is I just woke up and I was like, I was hundred percent back to normal. Just um, had a extreme fear of bathroom fans. I guess so. Yeah, it's just that white noise. Like now, it, it just bothers me. I don't hear anything in it, but I just know that I was okay. And now I, I highly urge people to be careful when they smoke weed on something because my trip was great up until that even though i took a, a really irresponsible dose like i would never recommend i didn't take five hits of ecstasy let alone with five grams of shrooms right five and a half grams so that was the only bad trip off of like classic psychedelics i had the only other one before that was salvia so my first couple experiences with psychedelics were actually pretty bad dramatic right but this trip, again, after a couple of weeks, it, it felt more like a dream. Like, it didn't influence me much. Um, I had another trip. I had I bought, like, an ounce of shrooms. And I I invited my old friend over from from where I used to live. And I, we each took an eighth. And I'm just sitting there, and I, like, start... I just... I don't remember much about it, except, like, things looked a little disproportionate. But I was, like, crying. And I was, like... I don't want to do drugs anymore. And I gave him all the shrooms. I'm like, I'm good. I don't need to do this anymore. And then I woke up like the next morning and I felt that way, but like, I still wanted to do drugs and stuff. You know? So it was like, it felt like it helped me. Then I was like, shit, I gave away all my mushrooms. So it, like, I kept having these like experiences that like, I almost didn't want to have, but like mushrooms were kind of telling me to do it. And that's something I didn't understand when I started tripping is that like, you don't just trip to get high or to have, but, I mean, you can, depending on the psychedelic, but, you know, you're dealing with stuff it's going to show you. So, like, something I learned as I got older is wait till you have that feeling of, like, I think now is a good time to take it, to take it, or else you get all these weird things that happen. And if you're not prepared to make any changes, you have a difficult experience that doesn't benefit your life. So that was, that was mushrooms when I was 16. I didn't do a whole lot until I did LSD when I was like almost 17. I wanted to go over why this experience ended up being so traumatic for Matt. Please note that these are just my opinions based on what I think. And I think a lot of these are pretty obvious for some people. For one, he was 16. Consuming illegal substances as an adult is potentially dangerous as it is, but those underage are not only more at risk, also more likely to make uneducated and rash decisions, such as taking too many drugs, while already under the influence, such as when Matt decided to smoke more weed during the come down. To be fair though, even though he had taken a lot of drugs before he decided to smoke weed, it seemed to be going pretty well for him. But with that said, when it comes to abusing ecstasy, even if the experience goes well, there's still the risk of adverse effects and the other long-term effects that come with it, if it is just ecstasy. Besides being underage, I think the idea to smoke weed on the come down was probably the most decisive variable in impacting the outcome of this experience. If Matt hadn't smoked weed during this experience, he more than likely wouldn't have a chomp response every time he uh, heard a bathroom fan go off or a bathroom vent. All jokes aside, combining weed with different psychedelics can drastically alter these experiences, and it can be hard for some people to gauge when to smoke and how much to smoke without negatively affecting their experience. Smoking weed on the come down is known not only for magnifying and altering the effects of certain psychedelics, but also prolonging the effects for some people. Another huge thing that affected this experience was the fact that Matt was tripping at home with his parents unaware, leaving him completely paranoid. He also didn't seem to have anyone else there present to help trip sit him or watch after him, someone who he trusted. I think he had someone that he had talked to on the phone previously, but there's one more thing I wanted to note. I think the part of the trip where Matt envisioned his parents coming into his room was just a dream after re-listening to it. Of course, the dream was most likely influenced by the drugs he had taken, but this is just my guess. Matt, if you're watching, comment what you think. Hallucinations of such detailed scenarios are not the most common on these substances from my perspective, but when you start combining like large amount of multiple different substances, things start to get a little bit more unpredictable. So 